Um, thank you all for coming here today to listen to me talk. Um, all right, so my topic today is changing the stigma attached to people with mental health conditions. Now, I really thank you for coming here. I know it wasn't just for me, but most people would avoid this topic because it's not easy to listen to problems about mental health or how these problems might affect you. So in fact, I was thinking, maybe I should change my topic, uh, like, you know, have like more popular words, like how to live your best life now, or because it's a university, how to have good grades, but a great love life. Um, another one I was thinking, maybe how to have meaning and joy in your life, because who doesn't want that, right? The thing is, all these things are actually relevant to this topic, because all these things are possible for all of us, every one of us here even when we are struggling, if we change the stigma attached to people with mental health conditions. So let me tell you why this is true and then how we can do it. So mental health conditions, you might have heard, referred to as mental disorders, mental illnesses, are serious health conditions. Take for instance, depression, one of the most common mental health conditions more than just feeling sad sometimes, it makes it so difficult for you to work, play, or do anything else. Why? Because nothing else seems to matter. How about anxiety disorders? Someone with anxiety, an anxiety disorder finds it so hard to have that peace of mind. Your mind is constantly worrying about the next thing, anticipating the what if, always feeling on edge. And these health conditions have ripple effects. They don't just affect the individual. Families, friendships are disrupted. Mental health places are impacted by the loss of productivity. Ultimately, the whole nation is affected because mental health conditions are far more common, far more serious than most people realize. In Malaysia, one in three people, this 30% of Malaysian adults, have poor mental health at any one point in time. But over the course of life, 80% of the population will develop a mental health condition. That's four in every five. will have a mental health condition some point in that life. So the question here is not whether you'll be affected, whether you should care. It's when and how you'll be affected. So the chances are quite high that you yourself will have poor mental health some point in your life. And it's practically a guarantee that you or the people you love will experience the consequences because of the ripple effects. This adds up to a huge economic, social health burden on society. But it's also an opportunity for us to make a difference and improve lives of people everywhere if we can change the status quo. And we have actually done something. You know, our treatments are better than they have ever been. New help is being developed. So we have hope for the future, right? We have made good progress. But one thing, remarkably, has not changed over the years. It's the stigma of mental health. So stigma means a mark of disgrace. Sorry, the screen is really far. I've got glasses. This, I can't see anything. So a mark of disgrace, uh, a sign of shame, right? So for ages now, having a mental health condition is associated with just that, as if somehow inherent in you, if you have a mental health condition, you are a weak, crazy, bad, or just unfit for society. And the thing is, our negative stereotypes goes beyond just perception, right? It causes real harm. Because people with mental health conditions are discriminated against. They are more likely to be fired, less likely to be hired, and they are rejected by people. Because who wants to be friends with someone who's crazy? Now, our negative treatment and our negative stereotypes of people impacts them, it actually makes them worse. They begin to see themselves more negatively, they feel more hopeless, and they take a much longer time to recover. The chances are, if you're aware of these stereotypes, research says that you probably endorse them too. I didn't realize how true it was until I became depressed. 
Now, when I was depressed, it's like, like I, I mean, I'm a clinical psychologist, so I would never say someone was weak for feeling bad. But when I was depressed, like every negative stereotype hit me like a ton of bricks. Like suddenly it was like, surely I had to be strong enough to handle the stress and surely I had to overcome this. And then surely I was weak for not being able to push through. Uh, surely I was a burden to others. And then surely my life was not worth living. And it really took others believing that I was not defined by my depression, that I was not what society might have seen me as because of the depression, that the depression wasn't just a problem I had to hide in a corner and figure out by myself, but the depression was something that I needed to reach out and get help from friends, family, from professionals. I owed it to myself and I owed it to others who cared about me. So it was then, four years ago, that I started Relate Malaysia. Now, Relate has three uh, purposes. So first is to educate so that people will understand what mental health is about, to destigmatize so people won't feel ashamed to seek help, to conduct research so that we can drive changes forward in society and communities, and finally, is to make help more accessible so that people everywhere in Malaysia, because we offer online counseling, can reach out and get the help that they need. And that's definitely needed, because we don't have enough mental health professionals in Malaysia. So anyone at psychology, best major ever, okay? But the thing is, you know, just having more caregivers, more mental health professionals isn't enough to build a mentally healthy society, we need everyone to play a part. Because our societies become great when people realize that they are the society. In every area of human excellence, you would find someone who had or has a mental health condition. Authors like Dame J.K. Rowling, who wrote Harry Potter. Politicians like Sir Winston Churchill. In business, the co-founder of Reddit, Alexis Ohanian. Athletes, the most decorated Olympian of all times, Michael Phelps, the swimmer. In music, Lady Gaga, and, and every child's favorite character, the actress Kristen Bell, who plays Anna in Frozen. So the list goes on. And so the fact is, we benefit when we include people with mental health conditions in our society. We're better off. If we write them off, if they write themselves off, we would not have achieved as much as we have today. So inclusion makes us a better society, better communities to live in. It's for our sake. So here comes my challenge to you guys. And it's not going to take a lot of time. I need your help to change the way we think and act around mental health. The first thing is to understand and communicate two fundamental points about mental health conditions to those around you. Number one, when someone has a mental health condition, it is not their fault. They didn't choose it, and it's not due to some single flaw like bad genes or bad brain wiring. Our state of mental health at any moment is the result of many different factors, okay, including a genetic material, our physical and biological health, our social environment that we're in. And all of us are diverse. We all have our own experiences and own personalities that contribute a role. Now, when the combination of all these things are in good balance, we're mentally healthy, right? We can, our mind is clear, we feel, ah, all right, you know, not bad, but good, like pumped. And we can act productively and fruitfully. When the combination of these things are non-imbalanced, our mental health deteriorates. Again, not a choice. And that was actually one of the most frustrating things when I was depressed, my inability to choose. Why couldn't I just snap out of it and feel good? Because nobody chooses to be unwell, but we can choose to reach out and get help. 
Which brings me to my second point. There is something to be done. Mental health conditions are treatable. Now, there are many different types of treatments, but I'll focus on the two uh, most common ones that you come across. The first is psychological treatment, and so that focuses on helping you become more aware of how you feel, think, and act, and guide you to make changes in these areas so that you feel better and then you act and think in healthier ways. And the second is medical treatment, which often uses medication to help you manage your symptoms, and that's used alongside with psychological treatment. Now, there are downsides to getting help. It costs you time, money, and someone might find out about it. But you're making a winning decision when you decide to get help. Because it's, you're avoiding the far worse costs and consequences if you get worse. But more importantly, you're investing in yourself, your health, and your potential. And the second one, for all of us here, I want to encourage us to make a change today along with our theme. Let's start with yourself and your mental health. So in the busyness of today's life, we're rushing from class to class, we're working with meetings, we're setting up TEDx talks. They were working, I think, 2 a.m., you know, this morning. We so easily forget to check in with ourselves and to notice how we're doing. So stop. Phones down. I know some of you are watching your phones now. <laughs> I can't see anything, but I suspect. So just stop for a while. Breathe, right, and listen. Notice how your body, your mind, your emotions feel. Like, what's going on? How's it doing? Or maybe it's not going so well. And if you notice something is not going so well, talk to a mental health professional. Just a friendly chat, nothing serious. Tell them what's going on, what doesn't feel quite right, and then you can decide where the further care will be a benefit to you. Now, I also encourage you to do this at the first sign, something doesn't feel right. There's a great analogy of mental health care to cancer care. Women are encouraged to do regular self-checks for lumps if to detect any early signs of breast cancer. Men are also asked to do early checks to dis uh, discover any early signs of what could be testicular cancer. Why? Because it's better to get well than wait to get worse. And so the same goes for mental health conditions, right? But so maybe you have noticed a sign, but you push it away because you should be tough, because it's your problem and you should handle it alone and you don't want to be weak. But caring about the state of your mind and your feelings is not a weakness. It is strength, it's wisdom, it's compassion for yourself. And then from there, extend it, the same wisdom and compassion to those around you. Lecturers, you might notice, uh, students who are struggling academically, show compassion to them. You know, falling behind and maybe not coming to class, not doing well academically, are common signs of something's not quite right inside. And maybe for the rest of us. If you have friends or family members who maybe start acting differently, a little bit more difficult to be around, show them compassion. When you're in doubt, err on the side of compassion. And why? Because even though all of us are different, on a much, much deeper level, we're more alike than otherwise. We have the same frailties, limitations, we have the same strength, the same spirit, we come from the same source. So beneath the mental health condition, there is a part of that person, the essence of the person, that remains untouched by the condition. And if you look for it, you will find it and you can then relate to the person like just another human being. So, 
I ask you to join me. Join us in relating to one another on that deeper level. And if we do that, when we start doing that, we will change together to be better people in a better society. Thank you very much.